We have the opportunity to make a habit of empathy, to recognize ourselves in each other. I, I would just, I would say that it's, it's probably mirroring, I mean, at, at every level, that you are standing in front of a person um, and in this intense experience that they've had, you are mirroring that experience internally. So if you could stand in front of it, um, a feelings and needs mirror, there would be someone on the other side who may not be mimicking your movements, it's not a visual mirror, but it's an internal mirror and they are mirroring what you're experiencing. And then it has an impact on them. They have some insight into you. What they do with that is another issue. But then they have some insight into you, which generally connects the two of you. So as, as a person that's empathizing, you are a mirror to the, to the, to the other person. Yeah. Uh, it, that, that would be the deepest metaphor, uh, the most accurate metaphor I could, but it's, it's, again, it's not a visual mirror. It's an internal mirror. You're internally mirroring them with regard to the specific experience that they're having. And would there be like different levels to it, like a soul level and a feelings level? And the... I wouldn't call it a soul level, and a feelings <laughs> level. But, but there would be different levels. There'd be levels of intensity for sure. You know, depend, if, I, if you had a, a, a mild experience and I'm empathizing with you, I probably wouldn't have a very strong internal experience myself. You have a very strong experience in some way, happy or sad, intense in your life, and then I'm empathizing with you. Well, there's the possibility that I'll feel it intensely and there's the possibility that I won't, depending on the level of, of empathy that I'm actually feeling, the level of connection, the level of mirroring that I'm actually experiencing. So the two components about how strongly I feel it are one, how strongly are you feeling it, and two, what is that level of connection between us? To what extent are you actually transmitting to me or am I actually receiving the voltage <laughs> that you're transmitting? So you mentioned a mirror. You can, you can think of a mirror as a, an actual physical mirror, but you're kind of saying it's almost like a mirror of... It's a magic mirror. <laughs> 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 mirror, mirror on the wall. Yeah, it's so it's. There's some kind of a deep mirror within you that it, it's being reflected on. It's like your soul or something. Or I don't know. I'm trying to go a little deeper. <laughs> <laughs> I I wouldn't call it your soul, but but other people might. I mean, I don't know what a soul is. Okay, what is it being mirrored on? What is what is? Um, you are actually experiencing. I mean, mm. every human being is capable of experience, mm. and 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 imagination, and so. I'm imagining what you're experiencing, and so I experience it myself. Can you recount a situation where you were a uh, mirror like that and something that happened? It was oh, constantly. Like, an intense, like an, maybe a you know, more peak, intense one. Well, clients of mine are in constant exchange with each other about their intense experiences. And so in order for me to translate them, I empathize generally with my clients whatever that experience may be. And so you'll very often see a tear in my eyes or my eyes wet while I'm mediating because it's very difficult for me to not empathize with them, to not start to imagine what it would be like to be them. Not that I'm consciously going through a process of me thinking I am now a woman who's in her 30s who... Uh, has to raise a kid by herself. I don't think that. I just, in hearing her account, somehow at an unconscious level, understand the unmet needs. I mean, I've been lonely in my life at times. I've not always been financially secure. Whatever it is that she's experiencing and describing, as I translate it, I get it because I've experienced those same things. I'm not putting myself necessarily in her shoes. I'm just identifying those same needs in myself, which are presently met, but might not be at some level, some point in my life. And so every single time I mediate, I empathize. My goal is to get the other person on the other side to empathize as well, which they generally can do if it's translated back into an unmet human need which they themselves possess.